Good afternoon everyone, it is Krebs here and today I am going to be showing you guys a little bit of the version 1.31 dev server for War Thunder. Do bear with me because my voice is actually gone at the moment. If you've been following the live streams you would know that for the last two days or so I've lost my voice. I can't go up and down in terms of pitches. I'm sort of restricted to an octave, a certain octave, just a neutral one. So whatever, I'm going to sound a bit monotone, doesn't matter. Anyway, what I'm going to be showing you guys, I'm going to be separating these videos out and discussing the uh, new dev server patch and what we're going to be expecting soon in War Thunder with Nebu. Nebu is joining me. You haven't heard him yet, but he's here. And he's going to be throwing us uh, some stats and whatever else so that we can fluidly show you what uh, these new planes are like. So I'm going to be dividing these videos into different sections. The first video that you're seeing right now is going to be about the new planes and also the new pricing system introduced into War Thunder. So I think we'd actually start off with looking at the plane I'm currently looking at and that is the XP-55. Just because this plane is freaking strange. Honestly never seen anything like it. It was a prototype plane so you can't really expect, uh, expect this to be a normal occurrence on a battlefield or in a dogfight. No way Jose, it wouldn't be happening. But this is one of the many planes that they've introduced into the new patch. For example, there are some other ones. They've got the XP-50. These are some uh, premium planes that we're going to be looking at. The XP-55, the XP-50. They've also introduced some lower tier uh, planes for every faction, such as the Thatch's F2A1 Buffalo. So John Thatch, I believe that must have been his Buffalo. I don't actually know why they've they've called it the, Thatch, the Thatch's Buffalo. Do you, Nebu, do you know why they might have done that? Why they've called it Thatch's Buffalo? <laughs> Just named it after. <laughs> well, I can only assume it was his buffalo, so that's his paint job on it. Yeah. So you can and you're gonna like get John multiple Thatch. people flying Thatch's buffalo up in the sky. I don't think it must have been superior to other buffaloes. I imagine maybe it must be the only the decal that's different uh, to the normal F2A1 buffalo. But uh, there you go. You're gonna be able to fly Thatch's buffalo. They've also introduced the P-36A Hawk, along with the P-36C Hawk as well. These are some low tiers. Um, apart from that, they've also given some uh, other... What else have they introduced? I'm sure they've uh, introduced some It'll other American Americans. plates. Yeah, have they? I thought they introduced they, more than that. Well, they added more than that. They added another version of the P-47 Thunderbolt. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, so... I don't know, kind of a late war model. Um, I assume more horsepower, but as far as I know, they didn't add the proper flight model to it uh, for now. Yeah. And yeah, the P-51, another version for that as well. I think it is slightly faster because we were taking a look at some stats before uh, we did this. We were doing a little bit of research and the D-28 does actually have faster stats, not only historically, but also in this game. They've uh, given it a better rate of climb and also... Um, faster speed. In comparison, I think we were comparing to the Germans P-47D over here. So if you head on over to the uh, German side, you'll see that their P-47D Thunderbolt, you'd think it would be the same, but it's not actually the same. The stats are slightly different. This one's a weaker version. Are they the same tier? Are they the same tier? No, they're not. Maybe that's why. Because the Americans have a tier 9 one, whilst the Germans have a tier 8. I don't know. Maybe well, they're trying I to balance only it. I can only assume here, but um, as far as I know, the German used lower octane fuel and was giving the engine less horsepower. That so, sounds something yeah. more sensible. Yeah, that sounds yeah. more sensible. That's what me. I would say. Probably that. Lower though. octane. Uh, let's see for the Germans. Did they actually add anything for the Germans? They've added uh, a lower, a tier one premium plane as well. The uh, CR42CN. I don't think there's actually a standard version for that. For uh, the Germans, they've only got that as a premium available over here. Did they add anything else for the Germans? I don't think they actually have. No new planes, mm, just some no. slight modifications. Yeah, that's apart, apart from that, that is the only thing. The USSR, they've been completely revamped. Uh, <laughs> every faction has their new tier 1 premium planes. And they've all been named after some sort of famous pilot in history. I don't know, maybe that's some sort of incentive... Oh my gosh, maybe I can fly out in Zukovsky's I-153. I'm definitely going to buy that. 
maybe that's the thinking behind it. I don't know. But uh, low, low price to actually get those 250 Golden Eagles for a Tier 1 premium. Why not? They've completely revamped the USSR uh, tree. You can see that the... I believe it was from the I-16. The I-16 onwards, they've changed the route. Because I think the lag 3 in 1.29 was after the I-16. And now the lag 3 is all by itself and starts its own tree. So they've moved stuff around there. And they've introduced the MiG-315. They've introduced lag 366. Um, it'd be nice to actually show you guys these. But we'll do it in some uh, forthcoming gameplay. Apart from that, what else have they added for the uh, USSR? Um, I think that's about it, isn't it? Oh, no. Mm. No, no, no. That. no they no, added no. some higher tiers. There we go. Yak-15P. Some jet fighters. <laughs> some stuff that probably a lot of you aren't going to be even able to access if you don't have a higher tier yourself. So, uh, they've added in the Yak-15P, which, as you can see, that's, that's, that's a glorious red. I have to just check that out right now. That's a glorious red. Look at that. That just that just uh, screams of communism right there, doesn't it? The yeah, Ibu. Stalin would be proud. Yeah, all those stars and all that red, and they even got a little bit of yellow on there as well. Look at that. That, that <laughs> Stalin would be proud of that. Go communism, why not? Um, they've also introduced the Yak 15, which is a tier 17. So good old. They've added a lot of stuff for the USSR. This seems like this seems like a patch tailored towards the Americans and the USSR with some other stuff. For the other factions. Over for the Brits, they haven't seen any love apart from the Tux Gladiator. Um, and I believe that's it. I don't think they've actually gotten anything else. For the Japanese, they've got some heavy fighters introduced. And me and Nebu were having a little bit of a discussion whether we thought these would be good planes or not. And I was thinking that they wouldn't be. Because if you look, if you look at the stats, they don't look good. But then again... You can't really rely on the stats. You have to sort of fly it yourself and see what it's like. But, uh, Nebu, you pointed out something quite interesting, I think, with the Kai 45 t uh, T, right? About All the right. gunners um, on top. Because, hold on, hold on, just before we get onto that. If you look at the guns, the guns for the plane, uh, you'll see that it has thir one 37mm Ho 204 cannon, okay? 15 ammo. That's not much you're going to be working with. And we got a turret on it, which is a small little MG. That's going to be on the back, okay? So if we go to the actual model... On you go, Nebu. You pointed it out. Um, yeah, so uh, here we have like a special modification that the Germans and the Japanese knew, uh, used. You have two big machine cannons on the top, which are mm -hmm. meant for shooting bombers when you're flying below them. Like, when you're safe from the enemy fire. And yeah, it's not added to the actual loadout at the moment, but... At least I'm hoping that they will become useful in yeah, some future, think... so you can go bomber hunting, yeah, kind of a new way, flying below them, shooting upwards. Yeah, that'd be, I mean, these things here are supposed to be bomber hunters, these heavy fighters here, and so you'd think that <laughs> they would at least have added, like, an AI into that position, act like a turret, almost, and shoot upwards and into those uh, bombers, but uh, kind of, kind of unusual, it's more of an ornament right now, so you won't be able to use it, uh... I don't know if you can maybe answer this, but are those things rotatable? Or are they locked in p in that position? They, they are in fixed positions. I think it's I don't know. It is is it 30 degrees, 35 degrees? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. So, so you have to be like stationary below the target, but <laughs> it's right. still much safer than flying behind it in the turret positions, like firing arc. Yeah, I totally get that. It'd be interesting to have those. Uh, be looking forward to actually seeing those get added into the future. Uh, apart from that, you get Higiri's A5 M4. Uh, added to the uh, tier one as well, and apart from that, I don't know. I think I, I, f I get this feeling that we might have missed something because I have a feeling that there are some uh, other planes that they've added, you know, in combination with other ones. Like for example, the Thunderbolt. There was that uh, twenty-eight version. I think there's some other ones as well, but I honestly cannot remember Did for my life. Oh, we here we go. The, the Mustang. Mustang. It was the Mustang. Yeah, that was the Mustang. The, uh, they've also added another version. What's better than it? I have no idea. I don't think you know as well. Um, I imagine I it probably flies better. I think it's a different better. radio. 
a different radio? Is that what you yeah, think? Yeah, but it, not not something <laughs> useful for us to uh, like actually use. But well, I think it, it's a different radio. Is that the little antenna sticking up at the back? Yeah, between antennas. Oh wow! So okay, so now maybe maybe you can contact people better, mm. <laughs> as if you couldn't do that already. Um, so antennas, ornaments, why not? So that's the new planes that they've added to the game. And I hope I've covered all of them. That's all the ones I can remember on the spot. But they've added a, a bunch of other features, such as... I think before we get onto the prices, we should talk about the cannons as well. So you were giving me the example of the Germans, okay? So if we go on over to the BF-109 G10 and look at their weapons, you'll see that you have two different loadouts, two different cannons, okay? Uh, two times machine guns, cannons, one times. One of them is a 20mm MG151, 200 ammo. The other one is a 30mm Mark 108, okay, uh, with 65 ammo on it. Okay, so you can actually choose your different cannons now, which is uh, quite nice to see. Uh, is it, do you know if you can actually translate that onto other planes, or is it only this G10 at the moment? Um, currently it's only BG-10, um, I can get some historical reference again, the other uh, BF-109s, the G-6 for example has the R-5 behind the name, the R-5 uh -huh. stands for the uh, different weapons loadout, and okay. we all know the G-6 as the big cannon thing of the Germans with two 30mm cannons under the wings, and those wing cannons are special modifications just like the nose cannon in the G-10. Uh -huh. so, what I can assume from that is that we might be able to um, choose our different loadouts for BF 109s well, for I the certainly future. I hope so anyway, because the only thing I see for the G6 is uh, choosing different bombs. That's the only thing, so no different cannons that you can pick from. Um, but that's, that's an interesting point, so it's good to see that there's a start. We have a, a starting line of where we can uh, maybe start customizing our planes a little bit going out with what loadouts we want to go for. I think that's sort of what's lacking a little bit in War Thunder at the moment, actually loading out different sort of armaments that are uh, possible on these planes. So it's good to see that G10 is actually able to do that now. Um, now, actually moving on to some prices. Wow, we were, we were comparing a lot of uh, prices because they've done a huge Im improvement here. And uh, I was saying to Nebu, you guys bitched and they listened. Uh, you uh, you bitched enough that they actually changed stuff, and I was jokingly saying, you know, at least they're not going down the world of tanks, the war gaming route. You complain about something and they change something completely different, but you pointed out that world of tanks have actually been, you know, listening a little bit in recent times. But anyway, it's good to see that uh, Gai Jin is actually listening to players and getting feedback and making amendments. You guys were complaining about the economy. You wanted repair prices to go down. They were changed. Uh, they were severely reduced in 1.29. And in fact, they've actually been reduced even further to uh, a whole lot less. And not only that, planes are significantly more cheaper now. I think that it's uh, safe to say lower tier planes, uh, they're probably about the same price. But generally speaking, as you get into mid and higher tiers, it's anywhere from 25 to about 50% cheaper on some of these planes. And we're going to throw some examples here. So for the Americans, for example, uh, we were lo looking at the Sabre. Nebu, can you tell me what the old price was in 1.29? The old price was 2.2 million credits. Right, 2.2 million, okay. And now it's at 1.67 million. All right, so, so you can tell right there. Uh, how much is that? Like a third? A third of the price? Am I doing some... Looks like 30%, yeah. Yeah, 30, 30%, okay, around there. Taken off. So, you know, you guys were complaining about the economy. It's getting expensive to actually afford these planes. I think I think this is probably around right where it should be. Uh, 1.67 million, that's a, that's a lot, but that's a tier 20 plane. You're going to have plenty to grind up to that point, plenty of time. So, you'll no doubt have, have that, uh, those lines available to you. Um, but apart from that, you know, everything everything has been reduced. What other examples did we give? We gave, we gave uh, the LA-5FN, for example, for the uh, the Russians. What was that in the old patch? The LA-5 was 720,000 credits. And a new one? I can't see it's, it on my screen. Yeah, it's 220,000 in the newer version, so it's Whoa. less than, uh, more than 50% now, like oh in my price gosh. reduction. Oh my gosh, but that is like massive. 
apart from the price that they reduced, they also reduced the um, here the level of the plane from 11 to 9. Uh huh. Um, due to like the recent changes in like flight model characteristics in the previous patch, uh -huh. I believe. Uh -huh. I'm not sure about that, but that's what I've read and I'm thinking. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So they've actually reduced it down to nine. I want to see if the uh, uh, where is it? The um, where what's what's the other country that can buy the LA5 FN? Um, the, the Germans, Germans. The premium one. Yeah. And that one's still a tier 11, so I wonder if they changed the uh, flight model for that. That'll be interesting to see. But uh, I might as well point to right now. They haven't actually reduced the prices for the Gold Eagles of planes, at least from what I've noticed. I mean, and I've bought a, a number of planes already, so I can't actually see the prices of them. But if I'm looking at the LA-5 FN for the Germans, it's still at a costly 5,250 Golden Eagles. So does that mean I'm going to buy it anytime soon? Probably not. Going to still wait for... Uh, a sale to go on because that is still really expensive for one single plane. Uh, if you play World of Tanks, you're probably used to uh, expensive prices for tanks by now, but whatever. Um, LA5 FN, that's a that's a good example of a huge price reduction on planes. What other what other uh, examples did we give? I think Focke Wolf, Focke Wolf German uh, tier 11 plane, the A5. Uh huh. Um, previous price was 630,000. And now it's three hundred seventy thousand. So that's al that's almost fifty percent right there. Almost fifty percent going onto it. That's uh, that's 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 a big. That's a big, very very nice. Um, wh what other ones did we give? We gave out some bombers as well, did we not? I don't know. I know the prices for the meteor here, the British uh, tier twenty jet. Go for it. Um, it says for me in the old uh, on the old server it's 2.2 million. 2.2. Just to buy it, and that's reduced by 700,000 lions now to 1.5 million. Okay, so you know that's about 30, 30 percent, 33 percent around yeah, there. Yeah, again. Big big decreases, especially on these higher tier ones. You know these are these are huge decreases. Uh, maybe we can we do you have any lower tier planes like mid tier ones that maybe other people could relate to? Perhaps, maybe. Well, F I was thinking uh, about the fucker wolf, but those were like kind of relate, <laughs> uh, relatable. Uh, uh, tier no. eleven. <laughs> Damn, I think we've leveled too much, haven't we, Nebu? <laughs> Probably. We can playing <laughs> like crazy ones. Yeah, we can't really see the uh, mid tier ones. You know, tier six and seven. We've just leveled up too much at this point. Um, what about uh, what about the Kai? I think the Kai was an extreme example. And that'll be a good yeah. uh, point for us to talk about repair costs as well. So on you go, tell us about the uh, what what's the normal price for it? Well, on the old server, it was uh, 1.4 million just to buy it. Okay, 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. The Ki 200 had the like kind of undeserved. Um, well, it, it was kind of famous for having the highest repair costs of all planes in the game with a like unbelievable 50,000 just for the arcade battles. And 226,000 uh, credits just for uh, historical battles, just to repair the plane. 200 and what? Say that again. 226,000. <laughs> just to so, repair a tier 17 plane, and, and you were saying this thing only runs on four minutes of fuel. Four so, minutes of fuel. So you get up in the sky. If you don't literally kill that entire team in that four minutes, you know that's that's all your money gone. And we were joking, saying we were joking about the re free repair time. I've got it clocked at 12 days right now, 12 days and 10 minutes, uh, 10 hours for a free repair. So, uh, yeah, you can play, you can play the game every, uh, you can play this plane every two weeks, just so you can get that free repair cost. If you're really that stingy about saving your lions, uh, so it's a, it's reduced to 20,000. So that's that's a tenth, that's a tenth of the historical battle cost now. For the Kai 200, uh, great, great to be seeing that. That's so, reduced so much, and it's not only the Kai 200. Every single plane has had its repair cost reduced as well. So you just go on to any of them. Did we list all, any other examples for the repair costs? The MiG-15 was like also a very expensive plane to run, just to um, not only to buy but also to repair. Uh huh. And like oh. it was on 30,000 credits just for a Kai. And eighty-seven thousand 
Uh, it's still expensive, actually. It's still it's expensive. still expensive, but it's like the best performing jet uh, of the game. Uh -huh. Like undoubtedly, um, it's the fastest one, one of the fastest climbing, and yeah, armament-wise, look at the cannons. Oh it is gosh, arguably yeah. the best. Yeah, forty-six thousand lions for historical battles, right there. Expensive as hell. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. I think it's, it's fair to say it's gonna be a limb buster. So, uh, you know, still expensive, but not nearly as much as it used to be. Uh, that's that's the cost for you guys right there. Apart from that, I think it's uh, one thing that we could add in shell racks and also modifications if you want to buy, you know, install a new engine, new air resistance. If you want to get some different uh, ammunition belts, all those prices have been reduced and they've been reduced quite a bit. I think around 50%, maybe a, a maximum of 50% is a safe bet around there that has been reduced. So overall more money in your wallet uh, to spend on a variety of planes. All right, so I think that pretty much covers uh, what we can say about actual new planes and also flight model, uh, not flight models, we'll get onto that in the next patch or next video. And also about prices. They've also added in a few other things to, the, to this patch. So for example, if you go on over to the hangar, God damn it, I need to bring up a random plane. Let's go on over to the hangar. You can see that they've added in a new way of adding on decals. So over here to the decals, you can see it's all conveniently located. Just you can see everything, every single decal, all in uh, one area. And uh, Nebu, I think uh, right at the very bottom, we're both uh, winners of the first Gladiators tournament. And I think everyone is a winner actually because you can all use this. It's only oh. given to the uh, winner of the Gladiator tournament, but everyone's a winner apparently. Um, to Gaijin. Everyone. Everyone, you know? Uh, and I think you were joking about communism, saying this is uh, just like well, communism. Well, everyone is, everyone is a winner, so everyone is the same. It's communism. Yeah. And uh, I think I think this patch definitely defines communism with the addition of a, of a very, very red plane. And also, everyone's a winner with these decals. Perfect. Perfect stuff to see. Um, they've also added in before we finish off this video, a referral system, uh, also clans, but the clans aren't actually working. There is going to have leaderboards. If you head on over to the leaderboards, you'll be able to see uh, individual clans as they compete against each other. And also, as we're saying about the referral system, well, I think what I'll do is actually I'll post the exact referrals of what you'll gain from these referrals in the description box below because I'm not going to list them off. There's no point in doing it. But generally speaking, you get Golden Eagles for referring each person and also more Golden Eagles as they level up throughout the game. And also, eventually when you get 10 referrals, you get a free uh, slot in your hangar. Okay, so if you have lots of friends, if you're a popular person, not like me and Nebu, we're loners, then... Yeah. Uh, then, then you'll probably have a, be fully loaded out with nine slots. Unfortunately, for Nebu and uh, me, we have to buy our slots because we're loners, no friends. Um, but that brings up an interesting point as well about abuse. And you brought it up, Nebu. You're saying yeah. that what you can build, you can you can easily get uh, sign up for a few email accounts, uh, register them, refer them. And then, you know, get 10 of them, for example. Oh, and lo and behold, you're going to have a free slot. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's, they're going to make it like that. I, I certainly hope they're not going to be that that foolish to actually fall for that. Um, um yeah, I mean, um, I just, I just read something. I think I was kind of wrong about making my own email addresses and, um, like, Pretending that I am my only friend because I see that 10 of my friends actually have to re uh, reach rank 10 for any aircraft uh, oh, I'm yeah? sorry, not for, not for any Air Force Who is it? No, it's not for any Air Force. They have to reach rank 10 So it's uh, kind of unlikely that my imaginary friends are going to reach uh, yeah, rank 10 In yeah, the game. I, I, I sort of doubt that as well unless you're so intent on saving real life money that you're gonna level up each of these imaginary friends uh, to level 10, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. Um, but if you have real friends, 
If you have real friends, maybe you can buy some real friends as well, I don't know. Then, on you go, there's a referral system for you guys, take advantage of that. I certainly will be, I'll be giving out my referral code to you guys. Uh, you know, that'll be great, I'm happy, happy days. But, uh, apart from that, that pretty much summarizes, generally speaking, some of the major changes they made to this patch. Uh, we still need to get some games here. But I see that there's only 139 people online, so I have a feeling that they've closed the servers down. And it might be a bit difficult to get some games, but hopefully we'll be able to get some. And that's going to be a separate video that we're going to do. We're going to be talking about some flight model changes. Some, some is actually an understatement. There's been a huge amount of flight model changes. And we're also going to be showing you guys what some uh, planes actually fly like. So anyway, uh, yeah, that'll be it. Until the next video, see you guys soon. Right, here we go! Three, two, one. Well, just some success flying on the Japanese planes. The only planes I've flown out in so far, apart from the Brits, are the Japanese and also the Germans. I haven't really given the Americans a mighty try. I haven't really given the USSR.